Okay, what did you do then about audiences, Matthew? Our starting point was quite a long time ago now, we're talking 2007, and we worked with an audience development agency, Audiences London, to start to pull together um, a better picture of our audience than we had hitherto. Um, as I explained, we were five different organisations, each with separate audiences and separate mailing lists. So it was important to try and work out what they had in common and what was driving the current audiences that we had in terms of what they used within the organisations themselves. We had a very broad spread of activity, from touring through to live events, through to um, sales of materials, scores and recordings, through to information on websites. And it was important to get a picture of what was actually driving our audiences, what they valued amongst that kind of portfolio of activity. So we conducted an e-survey, which would start to give us a picture of our audience in two senses. On the one hand, it would give us what I've just described, a picture of what they're actually using and what they wanted to see in the new audience, in the new organisation. On the other, it would also enable us to give, give them a profile. Um, by following the postcodes of the people that replied, uh, we would be able to start to build up what um, our agency called a mosaic profile. That is to start to get a picture of the kind of sociological groups that were accessing our work and what drove them, not only in London but on a national basis. So that was the basis of the work that we did. Um, the first phase of it was an e-survey. It went out to about 10,000 people. We received about um, a 12% response rate, which was very, very good. And we then started to draw conclusions from the responses to that survey. And what were those conclusions? Who were these audiences and what did they use the organisations for? Well, we developed an interesting picture. Um, predominantly, they use the um, uh, they use the organisations for their live events and for their touring. This came out fundamentally as the single biggest area of usage. But they were also very interested in the kind of background information and resources that the organisations had, and they were also very interested in its online profile. Those were the big things they wanted. There were lesser spikes of interest around areas like professional development, which were much more specialised, but were actually very important to the organisations. Um, what we did uncover, uh, at least in terms of the people that responded to us, was a very high percentage of them were already involved in the music profession in some shape or form. Um, a bit over 50% of the people that responded were involved in that way. Um, we had another 30% though who were simply audience in a sense, people that you might describe as being into new music in some shape or, or form, and quite a high student population as well. So. If that was a, an indication of the kind of demographic of the people that were most closely involved with us, it was quite a useful I indication in itself. Um, it was also a very male response. 75% you know, of the people that responded to us were men. It was quite low on any kind of diversity component. About 93% of it was you know, white British in some shape or form. Um, so that kind of gender balance and diversity balance was also useful. And we were also starting, start, starting to be able to build up a profile of the kind of people that these were. Um, one of the entertaining things about the kind of mosaic profiling, postcode profiling, was that everybody has a kind of label. It um, splits into groups and types, groups being the higher level. So you've got kind of 11 groups and then you've got types within that uh, group and a bit like uh, paints in home base they have kind of very inventive titles which might be uh, new colonialists or rural twilight or things like that um, but it was quite clear that our particular audience came in two main groups on the one hand it was quite well off engagers of various kinds they tend to have titles like city adventurers and global connections and that kind of thing. The kind of person that might well be you know, a quite well-off lawyer or working in the professions or in the liberal arts in some way, who are engagers probably across a very wide range of contemporary arts. And then um, a lot of people, probably a bit like 
a, a similar profile to many of the people that actually work in arts organisations, particularly at the less senior levels, people in their 20s or 30s, very mobile, um, tending to live in quite inner city areas with some ele element of gentrification. Um, I believe one of the labels was countercultural mix for one of those, for example. Um, I suppose a lot of artists themselves, um, intellectuals, uh, magazine readers of all descriptions, particularly new music magazines, tend to come from that kind of grouping. So those were the main kind of groupings. Not a lot of um, kind of suburban uh, interventions. And of course the picture varied a little bit around the country. London itself is such a, a when it had a slightly different profile from the rest of the country, where you might, for example, find more people from the caring professions or even from community groups taking part in the work. So we built up a very interesting profile, a mass of data um, from which it was uh, possible to sort out some themes, but which then needed further interrogation with further work, which we then opted to do.